Kelly has handed starting roles this afternoon to number 22, Megan McGarry, who comes into the team at the half-back line in place of Maeve Mudholland, while there's a further change in the middle of the field, where Claire Emerson, number eight, is unable to start. Her position is going to be taken by number 23, Laura Dehuncy, is the player who has been handed the starting role there. What it means in the Antrim substitutes bench now for the game, they will be hoping perhaps maybe at some stage to call on the services of Claire Emerson, who you can see there, and Maeve Mulholland, who have made the drop down to the substitutes bench for this match. Well, it's a similar problem at midfield when it comes to the Carlo selection today as well. Their manager, Ed Byrne, has been handed a major blow before the start of the game with the news that Roisin Bailey is unable to start. The St. Anne's player failed a late fitness test prior to throw-in and her place in the team is now going to be taken by number 25, Sinead McCullough. Still plenty of experience in this Carlo team. They've got a very strong central core of players. Ona Fitzpatrick starts at full-back and of course with the likes of Elaine Ware at midfield, Kilmartin at centre half forward and Hayden at full forward, they'll be hoping that scores will come easy to them today as they try to break this losing sequence against Antrim. The Carlo subs bench, as you can see there, has got Roisin Bailey mentioned on it at number nine. We'll have to wait and see whether she will play any part in the game. Failed the fitness test to start, but who knows, she could be sprung depending how this match is going to fare out. Also on the bench there for them, plenty of experience as well uh, throughout the various ranks. Our match referee for today's All-Ireland semi-final comes from the county of Donegal, Lorraine O'Sullivan from the St. Unionist Club, and indeed a referee who took charge of last year's Dublin Intermediate Final as well, St. Sylvester's played Castle Knock in that decider. It's an absolute perfect day for football here. The sun is shining brightly and it's only really broken through inside the last couple of minutes. It's going to be warm, it's going to be humid. Not really any evidence of too much uh, sign of a breeze around. So certainly it could be an energy sapping day. A day where the substitutes bench could well and truly come into play. One player who would dearly love to be down there, but unfortunately can't due to injury starts with us here in the commentary position this afternoon is the well-known Carlo player, Neve Ford. Neve, you're very welcome along. Thank you indeed for joining us. And really perfect conditions. We're down to the business end of the competition. A place up for grabs in the All-Ireland final. It promises to be a wonderful occasion here. Yeah, absolutely. Two teams that know each other very well and have faced each other numerous times over the last few years and both will rightly feel like they have a chance here today to get through to the All-Ireland final. So I think it's going to be a cracker of an afternoon interest there's all the hallmarks coming into this game suggesting that it could go right down to the wire two championship meetings last year both required extra time so really there's no real surprises when it comes to either side here they know each other so well and there's going to be very small margins you feel as a result could tip the balance one way or the other yeah absolutely and both teams have um, several players who would have faced each other last year and both teams also have new players coming in so there will be that little bit of element of surprise I don't think they've played each other this year either so they'll probably spend the first few minutes maybe trying to get to know each other again but I think it's going to be really exciting Talk to me about the uh, changes that are taking place on the respective teams. We'll start off with Carlo. You'll be aware of this very much so. Roisin Bailey, there was talk before the game that she could be in a battle against time to be fit for this encounter. Unfortunately, failed to come through the fitness test. And you were mentioning to us off air when we were just going through the two teams that herself and Elaine Weir were beginning now to form a nice partnership at midfield for Carlo. And this will come as really disappointing news. Yeah, definitely. Elaine and Roisin have been really good the last few matches and they'll, they'll kind Carlo team will be disappointed that she's not able to start but definitely in the replacement that they have coming in Sinead they're going to be still just as strong and as you say over in Antrim as well they have replacements coming in so both teams suffered a bit of, bit of a blow there. Yeah indeed Antrim losing out of their midfielder as well Claire Emerson unable to start as indeed is uh, Maeve Mulholland also a late change on the Antrim side. The conditions here this afternoon very very warm very humid and indeed you would expect as a result energy sapping so the impact from the bench is something that we'll be keeping an eye on right throughout the course of this match. Yeah, definitely. Especially in Carlo, a few um, players have made a really big impact off the bench. The likes of Adele Hayden, and Dan O'Brien have been really important in the last few matches. And the same with Antrim. They'll be looking to bring girls in. Especially hot conditions today. It's going to get hard, going to get uh, tired after when it comes down to the last few minutes. So we'll see lots of subs coming in. 
for Carlo. Obviously, they'll be looking for to find ways maybe where just went wrong in the two games last year that they narrowly lost against this opposition. What particular areas, again, from a Carlo perspective, do you think they're going to be targeting here today? Yeah, I think the up in the front there, Rachel Sawyer and Sarah Doyle have both been very on form, both been very influential players all year. So I think they'll be looking to get the two of them on the ball. Back in the backs, Ona and Ellen, both very sturdy, very solid. They'll be looking to keep Antrim out, keep no goals, I'd say, and just stay steady and stay, stay solid for the whole match. And of course, an All-Ireland semi-final always maybe the worst place in any particular competition you could go out. But the prize is absolutely huge here. We're talking about uh, a couple of weeks' time, the All-Ireland Ladies' Finals Day in Crow Park. Uh, what an occasion it would be for either of these teams to, to make that breakthrough. Antrim, of course, were so close last year, losing the All-Ireland Final. They'll want to get back. There's the old saying, you have to win, lose one to win one for Carlo. Equally so, this is really very much a, a golden opportunity that they'll be out there looking to grasp. Yeah, absolutely. Antrim will definitely be looking and saying that they have unfinished business in Crow Park. They'll want to go back, they'll want to make right on what they lost out on last year. The same in Carlo, have been knocking around the last few years, really feel like this is their year. Both teams will feel like they can go all the way. Both teams will really put in the work, I think, to see this afternoon even to try and get the prize. Well, there's no doubt about it. It's a, f- a huge day right across the Juniors and Intermediate Championship. The second of the semi-finals in this competition today will see Fermanagh take on Limerick. That game being played in Kiltoom in County Roscommon at the home of the St. Bridges GA grounds. That's coming up a little bit later on. But right now, all attention very much focusing in here on the loud video on this match where uh, Antrim indeed and Carlo will be hoping to secure their place in the, the All-Ireland Final. The referee out of the middle of the park is you can see there in camera shot just uh, the two teams going through their uh, final pre-match huddles now at this stage and Lorraine O'Sullivan the referee has blown the whistle calls them in very very little breeze to talk about so wind won't really be a factor in this game and two sides that know each other so well after putting in some memorable games against each other last year so the tactical switches and moves are going to be fascinating to watch as well there'll be so many interesting matchups out there maybe one or two that would appeal to you straight away. Yeah, well, I think um, Cathy Carey and Ellen Atkinson, Ellen Atkinson centre-back for Carlo and Cathy Carey centre-forward for Antrim is going to be a classic there. Both girls really experienced, both girls highly influential for their teams. That's going to be a great one. Sarah and Doyle, incidentally, I see going into midfield right from the start. Talk to me maybe about the logic behind that. Is it something maybe for the for the throw-in, for the restart, or will they maybe hope to play or their long-term? Yeah, well, that's what they've been looking to do for most of the year is to get either Sarah Doyle or Rachel Sawyer midfield with Elaine Ware just for the throw-in and Elaine to tap it down and just to get off on the front foot, get an attack in straight away has been their strategy. Yeah, so much emphasis nowadays on the throw-in, on the restarts, and it'll going to be very, very interesting to see how this one is going to fare out right from the get-go here. The uh, tactical battle's very much already evident out there. A place up for grabs in the All-Ireland Final for 2022. Lorraine O'Sullivan, former Donegal, senior footballer herself, a great day for Donegal yesterday in Carrick and Shannon with a victory over the Leinster champions, Dublin, securing their place in the senior semi-finals for next Saturday in Crow Park. But right now, it's all about the junior competition here, and the referee throws in the ball, and away we go. Well, it's early possession that's won here by Antrim as they come on the attack. Good, strong run uh, to Hunsey early on, making that early progress for them, playing the ball inside there to Prento, the full forward. Dangerous ball dropping in, and it's finished into the back of the net. Well, what a start. It was a quick ball inside there. The midfielder was coming in to finish it off to the net for Antrim. They've got that goal. It was a phenomenal start, and there was Anya Turberty there to finish it off to the back of the net. Dream start for Antrim. Disaster for Carlo. Super start, yeah. Really clever decision to just tap it in there by Antrim. Carlo on the back foot now will be looking not to open the field and get scores. Yeah, what a start indeed. So the Antrim ladies very much up and running here with that goal from Turberty setting them up nicely in the game. They've walked the ball in there quickly again. Mario O'Neill, the call wing forward inside and now Antrim have increased their lead. 1-1 to Antrim at this stage and no score as of yet for Carlo. Well really the Antrim ladies working the ball in ever so quickly, making the space in the inside forward line and uh, Kathleen Taggart, or Kathleen Taggart was the player who finished that one off. So they've scored 1-1 and indeed they're in here again. Brona Devlin, the corner forward, playing this one outside or two. Brenter again, the full forward turns and shoots and is it another one? It certainly is. It's over the bar. 
Well, they're scoring for fun at the moment. Two of the full forward line getting in there with Pines. Turberty with the goal. And all of a sudden here, in the blink of an eye, it's Antrim who lead by 1-2 to no score. Carlo just can't get the ball out of their own half of the field at the minute. No, Antrim pushing up very high in the kickouts and then the backs coming out. You can tell they mean business here. They really have a message to send to Carlo the first few minutes. Nula Mohan again playing that ball across there. It's gone towards Sarah Doyle, wearing 13, but operating in that midfield play. Sinead Hayden again looking to keep it in play on the far side of the field, out over the line it goes, and it's going to be a sideline ball here for Antrim, well they must be absolutely thrilled with the way this game has started here for them, very very impressive early on in the early exchanges but a long way to go, Sarah O'Neill involved there now for Antrim as they move once again from that smooth transition from defence to attack Laura De Hunsey again bringing the ball forward Getting some space just outside the 45 meter line. That's that quick delivery into the forward line again that they've used a few times. Grania McLaughlin inside chasing for it. Two Carlo players around her. Manages to square the ball back in. Another scorable opportunity coming up here for Brona Devlin. And she's landed another one in and over the bar. And the entire full forward line have scored for the Antrim team here just two and a half minutes in. And they have stretched their lead out here as one goal and three points to no score. And the Antrim full forward line creating havoc yeah absolutely and you can see how hard it is for Nicole to even find an option there for those kickouts. that's going to be something that's going to cause Carlo a lot of trouble for the rest of this game Printer has it again here she's going to cut in along the left shot well blocked down this time important interception coming in there from a Carlo perspective but they're under real pressure from their kickouts at the minute now they've got the ball in there to Gilmartin the centre half forward bringing this one forward for them it goes inside once more towards the direction of Sarah Doyle so much should be expected of her Carlo rocked by not having Roisin Bailey in the starting 15 but that's a good diagonal ball played inside. Can they get some change out of this one now? In there again was Elaine Ware. The midfielder has pushed right up. Strong and posing figure. Gets it back again to Sinead Hayden. Chance of the opening score for Carlo. And Sinead Hayden has landed it between the posts. That's a score that they needed. It's a score perhaps that the game needed. And it's Antrim 1-3. It's Carlo a point. And that score, well, it should settle down, Carlo. Yeah, I think so. That's really, really well needed. Well taken by Sinead there. And high ball into Elaine Ware, who started midfield, but I see is kind of going in to the full far position for Carlo there. Yeah, a number of positional switches there for uh, Carlo in this game, but they'll be very much now trying to overcome that terrible start that they endured to the match. Ball goes out over the sideline there. Anya Tuberty's pass a little bit wayward, so it's going to be an opportunity here again for Neve Kelly. Plays it back to the cornerback, Neve Murphy from the St. Anne's Club. Centre half back there is Alan Atkinson. Carlo moving the ball well towards Gilmartin once more the centre half forward has the opportunity to run here from midfield spots Sarah Doyle unmarked brings it up to the 45 metre line moving well now better here from the Leinster team Doyle bearing it on goal getting her shot away and that's going to go out for the first wide would you believe of the game four minutes and 20 seconds in we've had a goal and three points for Antrim a point so far for Carlo it's been frantic it's been fast it's been furious here at the very start of the game yeah very bu busy first few minutes this is the first first real kind of break we've had really really good start by Antrim they'll be super happy with that no doubt about it the uh, Ulster team will be extremely happy with how they've started the match Sarah O'Neill opportunity now for the half back line to push forward again as they move the ball confidently from their own defence once more here the ladies of the Safford County here's their captain once more Cathy Carey captain and centre half forward on the team the centre half back is uh, Circe Tennyson Good running from her. Once more, they managed to lay the ball back there towards Tuberty. Midfielder did really well to break through there, but overcarried the ball. There was a suspicion, you have to admit maybe from here, that perhaps you might have overcarried it, and the referee agrees with the decision, and it's a free out for Carlo. It'll be important for them maybe not to concede a score now for a minute or two and keep the scoreboard ticket over themselves. Yeah, I definitely think so. They'll be looking for a few points just to get back at that Antrim lead. Definitely really needed. They'll want to be solid in the backs for the next few minutes. Leave Murphy to Rachel Sayre, bringing this one forward well inside the 45 heading towards the D now onto the right boot gets her shot away it was dropping in there dangerously and it's got in and it's got over the bar and the end the goalkeeper I suspect happy to see it going over the bar it's two points in a row for Carlo and they've started to repair the damage that Antrim inflicted on them early on two important scores yeah really good so their score there by Rachel Sawyer she's a really pacey player and you can see she used that there to get away from her own player 
Sarah O'Neill again bringing the ball forward here for Antrim. They'll be hoping to keep on the front foot, but they've lost the possession in the middle of the field recently. Gilbarton very much one of the uh, chief benefactors, and Sarah Doyle moving it again here. So much of the enterprising play for uh, Carlo Perspective going through her in the opening exchanges to full back. Ona Fitzpatrick had pushed right up there again. Ball recycled back out towards the direction of Ruth Birmingham, the team captain for the uh, Carlo ladies for this match. And now they recycle it all the way back again here to Dula Mohan, running forward once more. Tries to change the direction of the play and eventually coming into it here is Orla Hickey, just outside the 21-meter line. The angle is acute, goes more for a central position, does well, carries the ball into the full forward. Sinead Hayden taught about shooting, instead elects to play it back to Gilbarton on the edge of the D. Here's Hayden once again. She does eventually take on the shot. The umpires have a good look at it and signal that it has gone out for Carlos second wide of the game. Yeah, lucky from Sinead there. She'll probably be a little bit disappointed in that. Much more positive here from Carla. They're starting to win the battles in the middle of the field and you can see that that's really allowing them to play forward. It's given them the foothold and it's given them an opportunity to uh, get some possession going. Referee not happy with the kickout, just telling everybody to go back and take it from the correct position once more. Anna McCann is the goalkeeper who is about to take that for Carlo, decides to go short at it in this instance, and now there's possibilities once more here for Carlo as they bring the ball forward. Or for Antrim, I should say, as they bring the ball forward here, carried it in there towards the tackle, was the number 22, one of the players who had started for the Megan McGarry, a late inclusion in the Antrim half-back line. Gilbarton very much beginning to focus in now in this game for Carlo. It's gone into a little bit of a cul-de-sac there, however. Referee again, blowing that whistle. And again, there's going to be an opportunity of a hot ball here. But it's interesting, as you mentioned there, the way that Carlo are beginning to win some possession up around the middle of the field here now, which is very, very interesting indeed for them. And of course, from an Antrim perspective, well, they'll be hoping to uh, make sure that they can get some more scores on the board, try to build on this hugely encouraging start that they've enjoyed into the game. Referee throws it in again. Well won inside there by the Antrim ladies. Uh, Laura de Huncy again was the player who won a quick delivery down inside to the full forward line and again there's possibilities here now for Antrim there comes the shot in there from Gronje McLaughlin and the goalkeeper had to be big and strong Orlet Prenter was inside again but McLaughlin great opportunity and a second goal there for Antrim would have really set them on their way yeah super safe from Nicole that was a really good piece of play from Antrim though and they were unlucky that they didn't score there Carlo would be really thankful that Nicole stood up there and now contested line ball over there I think I didn't quite see that uh, yeah absolutely both uh, teams going for it the lines person well and truly up at the play in the rec correct position to certainly uh, award the decision but no doubt about it the save there from Nicole Hanley very much has uh, given Carlo the impetus now to come forward on this particular attack let's see what they can do they've walked the ball into a lane where once more their midfielder plays it outsider takes the return well inside the 45 meter line here Nice sidestep, evades the tackle, gets it into Eve Kelly on the edge of the D. Here's the centre half forward, Orla Hickey. Needs that support play outside, has it as always from Elaine Ware. Elaine Ware, the midfielder, offloading it outside to Sinead McCullough. Real period of possession retention here now for the Carlo ladies. Again, Gilbarton taking the 1 2, setting them on the way. Also up there is Ruth Birmingham, the team captain. The shot from Orla Hickey eventually drops in and over the bar. And a good score from Orla Hickey. And you could really see, well, I suppose you could describe that as a four point swing. A chance of a goal at one end for Antrim, which they failed to take. A point at the other end for Carlo. And we're back to a one score ball game. Yeah, absolutely. Carlo, after working the way back into this game, patience there from the Carlo forwards the Antrim defence were well set back up so they had to take their time work the ball around it's an intriguing game that bright opening start to it has very much been cancelled out by Carlo's response here and just the goal between the teams at the moment but Antrim do look dangerous Orla Prenta in particular the full forward very much a focal point of the attack on the end of the move here again getting the shot away that's better that's in that's over the bar it's been contested by the Carlo goalkeeper but it's the second point of the game for the Antrim full forward yeah, really great score there from a really tight angle. Super kick in there from Orla Prenter. Yeah, took it really well. And again, it's going to be the Carlo goalkeeper there, Nicole Handley, coming out from the old Lachlan Club, preparing to uh, take the kick out, looking to see what options are available to her. They were in trouble early on from the kick out, and it's uh, resulted into a malfunction again here as Gronje McLaughlin plays a dangerous ball in there, allowed to hop and go out over the line and wide. And a wide there for Antrim. Normally, their shooting has been fairly prolific in the game thus far. 
but uh, there will be one or two question marks over that Carlo kick out the amount of overturns that Antrim have been able to secure so far that'll be a worrying stat for the Carlo management team absolutely yeah it's caused some serious problems there the Antrim forwards doing really well pushing up but Nicole has little to no options there to yeah, kick it to. it's that quick push up that's very much causing the difficulty for them early on Nula Mohan bringing the ball out of defence here for Carlo and eventually now they work it back out towards Atkinson the centre half back quick delivery in there again towards the, the corner forward Sarah Doyle just look at the block coming in there at precisely the right time from De Hunsey. really got back there and really made a telling interception and a telling defensive contribution Antrim as a result of that break forward here with Anya Turberty up to the 45 metre line quick delivery down into the full forward it goes again Printer with two points to her credit has this one the angle is acute plays a pack out to Turberty now takes the return cuts in field Antrim moving well here's Taggart the corner forward as well lovely diagonal ball inside that sets up the corner forward from the other side Broina Devlin and she takes the point it was all about teamwork it was all about movement it was all about accurate passing it was a good score by the combined efforts there of the full forward line who have now hit five points between them yeah super well there by the Antrim full forward line really great passage of play good passing yeah, Brona Devlin, 22 years of age, five foot four, the higher clerical officer who made her county debut back in 2016 with Antrim, taking that score and taking it really well. Now at the other end, Sarah Doyle brings the ball forward, confidence to take on our marker up to the 14 meter line, 21 meter line, gets her shot away, immediate response, excellent score. Sinead Doyle, whose work rate has been huge right throughout the game so far, wearing 13, playing deep, and getting her opening score. Great score. For from Car or from Sarah and Carlo really need that just to stay in touch with Antrim who are starting to get back into the game again after that good start. We're approaching the 13th minute of what has been a hugely enjoyable All-Ireland semi-final so far one goal at five uh, to four points as you can see there and uh, the scoreline again and Antrim immediately on the attack and there is De Hunsey getting that shot away and the umpire signals that it's in and over the bar her opening score of the game it's point for point at this stage two teams really having a go at it now and uh, the scoreline one goal and six to four points really exciting few minutes hasn't it been mm, absolutely it's very open, no real, I suppose, defensive systems, a very high push-up by Antrim in particular on the kick-out, and Carlo playing a good direct game. Good match for spectators, this. Yeah, really good, really enjoying it so far. Yeah, well, there's another overturn in possession once again, and once more is to Hunsey, who is going to play it in there towards Printer. The full forward cuts inside. Now, could she make a better angle for herself? Onto the right boot, gets the shot away, and the umpires eventually signal that it went wide. Well, we're talking, we're going to almost have a Hawkeye moment there. I don't think it's going to be used here. <laughs> <laughs> and has probably been stood down in Crow Park after the weekend as well. A little bit of hesitation, but they decided in the end that it went wide. Second wide of the game there for Antrim. Really, it is a trail a minute here so far. Kick out taken once again by Nicole Handley. Doing well to find Elaine Ware in the middle of the field and Carlo moving the ball very quickly now to Sinead McCullough. Lovely direct running game that Carlo are deploying here. McCullough plays that with outsider. Here's Neve Kelly, the corner forward. Moves on to the 14-meter line. Still Kelly, holds it up, gets the diagonal pass away. Opportunity here for Sinead Hayden and the full forward shoots and dispatches the ball over the bar for her second point of the game and it edges Carlo a little bit closer. It really is score for score at the minute. These two forward lines seems to have the, the beating of the respective defences so far. Absolutely, yeah. Serious pace in both forward lines there. Really good score from Sinead Hayden. Good ball in as well from Sinead McCullough. Yeah, the build-up play and the distribution into the respective forward lines, no doubt about it. Signs of teams well coached and a lot of work on the training field being carried into this game. Ashley McFarland is the full back there for the Antrim team. Brings that ball right up the field. Here's uh, Taggart again. Caitlin Taggart taking on the Carlo defence looks around to see what options are available for her. Eventually the ball comes back out here to Sarah O'Neill. Little period of uh, possession retention here as uh, De Hunsey again plays the ball in somewhat f uh, ambitiously inside there. Grady McLaughlin as well keeps the move alive and now they recycle it back out to Turberty. Midfielder goes down under the pressure of the tackle and that's going to be a free out for Carlo and a good overturn for them and right now they will be hoping to build on that and they play it inside there to their centre half back Atkinson sweeps it across to the far side of the field. Team captain Ruth Birmingham having a little bit of difficulty in keeping it under control. Gilbarton had made that run through the centre. She's free there and now they eventually play the ball towards her way over on the 
far side of the field and she in turn moves it quickly through the centre now that's an ambitious ball towards uh, Elaine Weir had made a great run inside if they can spot her here so Hickey who's in now Weir is coming in for it back to Hickey opportunity here shot blocked out whistle it sounded of the referee it's going to be a free in oh you could see the run of Elaine Weir there if the ball had got into her a little bit sooner she was in and goal yeah and I could see Rachel was trying to hand pass the ball across there and I think she got a bit of tug in the arm which is what the free is for mm -hmm. Carlo for the last few matches have been their play forward they've been wanting to kick the ball into the likes of Rachel and Sarah the way Antrim have set up they haven't really had the opportunity to do that but that was an, a time where they did you can see they'll get a lot yeah. of joy off that if they have the opportunity to do it well spotted that's exactly what the free was for and it's going to be kicked in here now by Sarah Doyle the player from St Bridget's having the opportunity here to uh, add on her second point of the game one from play already this will be the opening free that she has a, a real chance of converting here from between the 21 and 14 metre line should suit a right footed kicker and she routinely dispatches that one in and over the bar for her second point of the game and uh, at this stage now as you can really see just uh, three between the teams one goal and six to six points that early goal proving very very crucial that was scored by Anya Turberty for the Antrim ladies good quick distribution of the ball again for Antrim Tennyson bringing them forward. Good work from the goalkeeper to pick the player that was free with the kick out. And Antrim making really steady headway across that far side of the field again. Strong running game that they've deployed here on a numerous occasions so far. Let's see if they can work something inside there again with their centre half forward. Cathy Carey up and it comes back out here to the full forward. Prenter onto the right boot. Gets the shot away. She was unbalanced as she was kicking that one. Nicole Handley has to decide whether to stick or twist. Committed herself in going for the ball and it was a good decision goalkeeper brought that one out well affords Carlo the opportunity to build here on the counter attack again 17 and a half minutes into the opening half Gilmartin going storming through the middle Sarah Doyle now 45 metres out from goal real real intelligent run now plays the ball in there towards the forward line goalkeepers out let the ball hop and let it go out wide well read well covered third wide of the game for Carlo so far Antrim have hit two and the opening 18 minutes have just flown by yeah, really, really good. As you can see, the, play, the teams really know each other really well and they've been setting up their taxes, tired. Their matchups have been really good so far. You can see Carlo are letting Antrim have the kick out fairly deep in, which is a difference Antrim are yeah. pushing up on yeah, the Carlo. Absolutely, yeah, they're yeah. surrounding it a little bit compared to the, what's going on at the other end of the field. Interesting to see if Carlo are going to uh, continue with that game plan. Now it's Antrim's opportunity to bring it forward again here. They've walked the ball in again towards the forward line with Printer, who has been in an absolutely amazing form. There's the shot coming in from distance, drops short, and Nicole Handley, second time in succession that she's been called on to defend that goal, comes out here to Orla Hickey. Scored a point a little bit earlier in the game. Now, Elaine Weir trying to bring the ball forward again good strong running from that midfield position and taking the 1-2 and moving it well taking the return pass from McCullough now it comes inside to Neve Kelly here's the corner forward 14 metres out from goal still it's Neve Kelly looks up spots the run of Gilmartin has it here just inside the D back to Sarah Doyle she's going to lob it in there to the full forward line again but uh, the Carlo player unfortunately from their perspective behind her marker in that particular instance and it's an opportunity for Anya Turberty to set the counter attack in motion here for the Ulster team once again. Turberty and McCullough having a good old battle there and that's going to be a free for Antrim once again. Their midfielder just been brought back, been told by the Donegal official where the free should be kicked from and now she takes the return and here come Antrim again but once more the referee is not happy. Well the free was taken. I don't know if the referee spotted that the free was taken there or not. She was looking at maybe something else going on but in any case they're going to bring it back and it's going to be one that uh, Brona Devlin is going to kick right foot it. So Antrim goes again. Devlin takes the return. So much movement from the Antrim forward line here. Cathy Carey lobs that one inside. Good play now from their midfielder. Anya Turberty squares the ball inside. Once more, there's a possibility to see the shot coming in, going off the post and eventually going wide there. And the player at the end of it was Laura de Hunsey again. But it's gone out there for Antrim's third wide of the game. Their level on wides is uh, just three points between them on the scoreboard. And the opening 20 minutes so far has, is suggesting, to me at least, that this could go right down to the wire. Yeah, absolutely. Both teams fairly ma evenly matched there. Lara de Hunsey and Anya Tuberty are giving really great ball into the forwards there, which has given them great opportunity to try and get scores. Yeah, some wonderful distribution into both forward lines so far has been a telling factor in this game. 
the work rate as well of Sarah Doyle has been eye-catching in the opening 20 minutes so much of the good play for Carlo going through her going in there to win it for Antrim is the cornerback Neve McIntosh did well to cut that attack out went in bravely ball comes out here to Cathy Carey the centre half forward and team captain from Moneyglass plays it in over the top once more possibilities here now for Gronya McLaughlin gets the ball under control and that diagonal ball that's so difficult to defend against works well here for Antrim it's Maria O'Neill who gets through gets her shot away but unfortunately shoots wide well the diagonal ball that went across from right to left was a defence splitting pass but O'Neill couldn't supply the finish yeah super creative play from Antrim up the forwards they're really trying to switch it up they're not doing the same thing every time it's making it quite difficult for the Carlo backs to really predict and defend properly yeah absolutely and that diagonal ball very very difficult indeed to defend Carlo a little bit more direct almost lot straighter lines of uh, possession going in for them Rachel Sayers has scored a point already she's on the move again here she's 21 metres out from the goal gets it back onto the lift boot dangerous ball inside goalkeeper gets a fist to it and did it off there Anna McCann the Antrim goalkeeper called on there and the referee signalling that that is going to be a 45 well it was a dangerous ball that was played in there one that very much uh, put the keeper under some pressure but the 25 year old teacher who made the debut back in 2014 against Fabana was equal to the challenge got the fist to it and deflected the ball out and it's going to be a 45 that's going to be kicked in here for Carlo by Neve Kelly testing moments in the Antrim defence there yeah a good ball in there from Rachel in on top of, I think it was Sinead Hayden. Uh, good to try, really solid though by the Antrim goalie, got the fist to it, really important. Yeah, as you can see, plenty of water being brought on, taken on board by the players as well. And now Dave Kelly lands this one in again, watched all the way by the defence there, and it's gone out to the wrong side of the post, and indeed it's gone out wide. It's wide number four in the game here. And the scoreline remains six points to a goal and six. Three between the teams. And once more, the Antrim goalkeeper now with the restart. And Carlo quite happy, as they have been throughout the game. They're giving up that kick out to Antrim, letting them build from the back and say, right, let's bring it up to the 45. We'll engage and see if you can work your way through us from there. Antrim with a whole array of players back. Now getting the lines of running going. Cathy Carey, good run inside there as well from Anya Tuberty, taking on the defence. That quick ball in again here, finding Arlett Prenter. Back to Carey it comes. Out here to the wing forward, Gronya McLaughlin. That's a wonderful move and an absolutely brilliant point. McLaughlin on the end of the move, her opening point of the game. Well, the Carlo tactic is to give Antrim the possession and maybe engage from the 45-meter line, but their lines of running there was very, very difficult to stop. Carlo had players back, but they couldn't get the tackles in. Yeah, and I think that's something Carlo are going to have to look at because you could see there some of the Antrim girls that were involved in that attack started their run from the far 21. So Carlo will probably have a look at what they're doing for the kickouts there it's an interesting strategy and now again it's an opportunity for Antrim here building up some momentum again it's Printer again she's got players outside of their queuing up here there comes the shot and another brilliant save from Nicole Handley who deflects it out at the expense of a 45 it's the second save she's made in the game here and you could make the argument that she's very much keeping her team in it absolutely super save by Nicole there the Carla backs were well outnumbered but Nicole stood up Nice and big in the goal. That wasn't getting past her. Two really good saves, and absolutely, if those two goals had gone in, it would nearly be lights out for Carlo at this yeah, stage. Yeah, it would have been a very, very different complexion on the game. As a result, Carlo still in here, but no doubt about it, it's an Antrim team here with Cathy Carey as team captain about to take the 45. This is definitely going to go short if Sarah O'Neill made the run inside for him. Instead, they're going to play the ball indirectly, and Gráinne McLaughlin... A point earlier on, make that two. Gronje McLaughlin doubles her account uh, for the game so far and stretches out the lead. It's one goal and eight to six points at the moment. Antrim in the ascendancy here. Yeah, and really good spread of scores there by the Antrim forwards. I think five out of six of them have scored so far by my count. Yeah, absolutely. So certainly no doubt about it. Uh, the score is very much coming in for four Antrim in the game and uh, very much uh, making sure that they're getting those scores away. Five of the starting six forwards, as you mentioned, on the score sheet. I think it's some. It's four, I think, for Carlo so far. Mm. So it just shows maybe that it's a game very much been dominated by the respective forward lines. Here come Carlo again. Ball played in there towards uh, Rachel Swear over on the far side of the field. Once more winning some possession. Good play here from Carlo. As to bring the ball forward. Up towards the 21 meter line she goes. Rachel Sarah still in possession. Gets it out here to Sarah Doyle. She's going to trouble Antrim. Still at Sarah Doyle. Gets the shot away. But the goalkeeper, McCann, there to deal with it. Referee's whistle had sounded in any case. 
And uh, again, it's going to be another opportunity here for Carlo to keep the pressure on. Whistle blowing from the referee. And uh, she's just bringing it back to where the infringement took place. And a good opportunity here for Carlo to pull the point back here. Important for them. Conceded the last couple of scores. And indeed had another near miss when it came to conceding a goal. So they'll be hoping maybe that Sarah Doyle with two points to her credit so far. One from play. One from a free. In a position not too unsimilar to where she's kicking this one from. Again it's off the right. Again, the accuracy is there, and again she raises the white flag, her third point of the game. Yeah, super from Sarah Doyle. She had to stand up this year for free-taking duty since Clean Mihe was unavailable due to injury, and she's really been super the last few games. Yeah, very composed, very accurate, got one or two maybe in positions that you'd expect her to get early on, and that's always good for a free-taker. Now, Juna Coleman bringing the ball forward on that cornerback position. Out to Cathy Carey. More of an influence as the game goes on. Turberty, the goal scorer from early in the game, running into the cul-de-sac there. Loses possession in the tackle, and that's going to be a free out. And that's good from a defensive, I suppose, a morale perspective there for Carlo. That's going to lift them a little bit. Absolutely. Sometimes they say a turnover in the back is as good as a score. Absolutely. It lifts the team. It gets the momentum going and gets their confidence up and running. Here's their cornerback, Antoinette Downing. Far side of the field. Lovely ball into space. Again, Rachel Sear had made so much space there. Out ahead of our marker for it, Kilmartin as always up and joining the attack. Constant threat all day. So too has Sir. That weaving run draws in the tackle, wins the foul, and presents Carlo with a gilt edge opportunity of landing another one here. And immediately, Sir Doyle is going across there to take it. Just outside the 21 meter line, inside the D, and a great opportunity here for the St. Bridges girl, maybe to get this one in and over the bar and really ask questions here now of this stage of the Antrim team reduce the deficit to three again and she gets the free away and in and over the bar and there's just that uh, three points between them well that goal is telling very very crucial and uh, you know Antrim inevitably will be thinking maybe of the goal chances they left behind yeah definitely I think that Carl will be very thankful that they Nicole has been solid in there and the goal the difference the only difference between the two teams at this stage it's a game that's on a knife edge at the minute here come Antrim again Tuberty again coming forward here Gets her pass away again. And possibilities here for the wing forward, Gronya McLaughlin. Kicked two fine points in the game thus far. Here is Printer, the full forward. Oh, she's really on form. Three points out for her. She's a constant threat inside there. And it's her movement from the full forward position where she's coming out, offering another option a little bit further out the field. And Carlo are just finding it difficult to pin her down. Yeah, absolutely does. Looping runs out the Oral Printer is making her really hard to track. And she's doing really well getting good return off them. Yeah, three points so far for her. And again, the Carlo kickout is under a little bit of pressure. Dangerous one in over the top. Handley again has to come out and take it. Well, she's by, been by far the busier of the two goalkeepers in this game so far. But uh, again, Carlo have orchestrated their own downfall and the shot eventually coming in there for Maria O'Neill. Oh, she takes the point. A goal perhaps was on and a point in the end for Maria O'Neill, her second point of the game there. And again, you know, you just have to analyse it and if you clinically analyse it, a lot of Carlo's problems have come from their own kick out so far. Absolutely. Antrim are living off Carlo's mistakes at the moment. That's something that Ed Burke and his team will really want to look at at half time. But the Antrim forwards and the midfields are doing super there. As you can see, they're really working hard tracking the runners. One goal and 10 to 8 points. That's surely going to be a free for Carlo. Definitely an infringement there on Ellen Atkinson. The old Leckland centre half back. Wins the free, takes it quickly and moves it up the field quickly again here towards McCullough. Sinead McCullough, number 25, in from the start as a late replacement from the midfielder Roisin Bailey who didn't start. Free kick quickly there by Neve Kelly, but it was kicked very much inaccurately and there's going to be an opportunity here. Is there for Antrim to move the ball back? But uh, again, Carlo battling hard for it. Neve McIntosh has some work to do. The corner back to tidy up the situation. And Antrim moving again with this familiar line of running that we've spoken about a few times in the game. Here's Cathy Carey deciding to use the width, but just not enough width here in the pitch for that one. And it's gone out over the sideline. And it's a sideline ball for the Carlo corner back, Neve Murphy. Well into the... Closing stages here of the opening half and bang on the 30 minute mark. The referee blows the whistle. Half time here and uh, very much an entertaining, a hugely enjoyable game. One goal and 10 to 8 points. Antrim in the ascendancy. 
Give me a half-time summary of that. Yeah, well, I think that that's going to be a game of mistakes there, really, when they're looking back at it at half-time. Antrim will be looking back at the chances that they've missed. Carlo will be looking back at the chances that they've provided Antrim with. I think both teams are going to have a lot to talk about at half-time. Yeah, the two team talks are going to be interesting. It's half time here at the moment. All to play for in the second half. You don't want to go away from whichever device that you're streaming this game on. We'll be back with second half coverage. But at the interval, it's Antrim who lead. One goal and ten to eight points. And you're very welcome back for our second half coverage of the TG Cahar All Ireland Ladies Junior Football Semi Final. We're at the interval. It's Antrim who lead against Carlo here by one goal and ten points to eight points. You could in many ways look back in this game, leave and pinpoint maybe the opening score of the game, that goal coming inside the opening couple of minutes right from the throw-in when Cathy uh, Carey and Co combined well to set up Anya Turberty, the midfielder who came through and finished to the back of the net. That's really been the score that separated the two teams, you could say, for long sections of this particular match. 1-10 to 8, the advantages with Antrim. Let's look at it from a Carlo perspective first and foremost. What do they need to do differently in the second half? Yeah, well, definitely they need to get off to a good start in this half, get the first few scores, I think. They'll probably, we were talking at halftime, maybe push up more on the Antrim kickouts because that's where a lot of Antrim scores have started to come from, where they've been able to build and work and give good ball into their forwards. Yeah, no doubt about it. It's been a major uh, stumbling block as in many ways for Carlo. It's the sense that once Antrim get their kick out, their lines of running is that efficient with the pop pass off the shoulder. They're able to make significant progress up the field and are able to take scores more often than not as well. Yeah, absolutely. They've got really good runners in Lard, Lard Hunsey and Anya Tuberty have been really good in midfield there with the transition ball. So I think that that's something that they'll definitely want to capitalise on in this half as well. Yeah, well, it'll be an interesting second period, no doubt about it. We had a whirlwind start from the throw-in at the beginning of the first half. Let's see if there's going to be something equally as exciting at the start of the second period of play. Again, the referee gets ready for the start of the game. Lorraine O'Sullivan, the former Donegal player. A Carlo team that finished uh, second in Group A of the All-Ireland Championship in the group stages behind Fermanagh. Very much with it all to do here against an Antrim team that finished top of Group B ahead of Limerick and New York. Just three teams in that group. Remember, Limerick in action a little bit later on today, taking on Fermanagh in the second of the semi-finals in Kiltoom. But all eyes on the match official again as she gets ready to get her second half underway here. And Lorraine McLaughlin throws in the ball and away we go. Again, possession won here by Antrim. De Hunchy plays it in almost immediately into the full forward line. Antrim with uh, Printer looking to make an early statement of intent. The shot eventually coming in from Taggart, but the corner forward's effort drifts out to the wrong side of the post and wide. Wide number five for Antrim. They hit four in the opening half, and the kickout coming in here again from Nicole Hanley, who made a number of interesting saves in the first period of play. Gets her kick out away. That's a good confidence builder for her. Ruth Birmingham, the team captain, was the player who made herself available. Here's Antoinette Downing, player from Fina, the cornerback, moving the ball forward. Ona Fitzpatrick there again. Again, the referee's whistle sounds that it's going to be another free here. So we're not going to have anywhere near as exciting start to the uh, second period of play that we had to the opening half. Back they go. Goalkeeper being deployed out here again. Nicole Hanley bringing the ball forward. Almost venturing up to between the 21 and the 45 metre line. Carlo have to be careful. Neve Murphy, it's high risk strategy. As Oren Lynch would tell you maybe from the events yesterday in Crow Park deploying this kind of a system. They've overturned possession, Antrim, 45 metres out from goal, and it goes again towards Printer, moving in here, dangerous run inside, but just lost control of the ball, and Fitzpatrick goes there once again, the full-back, to benefit from it. Well, real worry at moments again now. Let's see what Orla Hickey and her colleagues from Carlo can do as they try and work the ball out of the fence. Elaine Ward bringing it forward. Still it's Ward, coming towards halfway, looking to see what options are available for her, and she's over, carried it, and you could really say about the start of the second half, so far here, Neve, it's been error ridden. Yeah, absolutely. And the pressure that Antrim are putting on to the Carlo backs is really causing them problems at the moment. Yeah, that's a dangerous ball in there once again. Just looking at uh, that Antrim team, I'm not quite sure if Claire Emerson has come in the number nine. We'll maybe confirm that. I think she's definitely on there. Um, so that could be that could be interesting to see. We'll keep an eye on that in any case. Carlo again coming forward here. They've walked the ball into McCullough. The whistle has sounded from the referee, and it's going to be another free. It seems to be one or two things different in the team this time round. 
we'll confirm it as we go along. So, right now, a free for Antrim. Back of their own 45 meter line again. And an opportunity here for the Ulster team to bring the ball forward. Juna Coleman involved, getting the break up the field towards uh, Marie O'Neill. Looked lively right throughout the game, the course of the game so far. Tuberty, here they come, overlapping run again. Racing out there is Devlin to keep it alive. Final pass just let them down ever so slightly. Still it's there, still it's a chance, still the shot comes in, but it's wayward finishing in the end. And a very promising move for Antrim results in them failing to add a score. It was the corner forward Tiger who eventually had the shot, but it went out for their sixth wide of the game. Yeah, Antrim playing all the football for the first few minutes of this uh, second half. A change there for Carlo. I think that's Ava Kieran coming in for number 25, Sinead McCullough. Yeah, McCullough, the player who is making way. Kieran, the player who is coming on there. So the change has been made by Carlo right at the start of the second half. And clearly we can see out there as well that Claire Emerson, the midfielder who failed to start for Antrim, has been brought in for the second period of play as well. So it'll be interesting to see how those players settle in. Three minutes and 25 seconds gone in the second half. One ten to eight points. Scores at a premium so far as the two teams look to settle down after the restart. Carlo's best move of the second half so far far results in Sarah Doyle been giving the opportunity here 21 meters out from goal shot from Sarah Doyle never really troubles the goalkeeper Anna McCann who was out there quickly to gather that one and sends a long relieving clearance over to the far side of the field Kathy Carey making herself available to take it the team skipper now bringing the ball forward links up inside there with Sarah O'Neill the wing back the familiar line of running that we talked about involves Turberty in there to De Hunsey De Hunsey again up to the 14 meter line here onto the right boot gets her shot away and slots it in and slots it over the bar it's our second point of the game and again maybe I know we're going back over broken ground here but it's the lines of running that Antrim are putting together their support play in that running game that's very much troubling Carlo very difficult to get the tackle in before the pop pass is given absolutely yeah the running from Antrim there is really outstanding it's really hard to even stop those runners though even if you are properly tracking them and defending them so they're doing really well there and they're getting really good return out of it um, yeah huge success for them so far in in that type of game and it's that direct running game that we've mentioned here has caused a lot of problems uh, the finish as well from De Hunsey, very well taken she's played well her interchange between defence and attack has been excellent and that was a good finish yeah really good she's been excellent for Antrim so far and the boat mid boatman fields actually for Antrim have been really influential yeah, and you couple that in with the influence as well that Sarah Doyle has been having in the game. There's a fascinating battle developing around that particular sector of the field. So again, all eyes now is going to be on the uh, Carlo defence as they get ready for the uh, restart here with our goalkeeper, Nicole Hanley. Goes short with the kick-out and gets it away to Nula Mohan. Better retention on the kick-out, so the restarts for Carlo at the start of the second half. It was an area, I'm sure, that they would have talked about at half-time. Atkinson now bringing the ball forward here. Good running from her. There's the quick delivery. Down into the inside forward line. Let's see what Carlo can do this time. Could there be a score for the take it here? It's their wing forward who's making the run inside. Rachel Sayre, who was excellent in the opening half. And the tackle going in. There's one of the Antrim players down, but the free has gone against them. And the referee has got the notebook out as well. And there could be an opportunity coming up here now for Carlo to get a, well, a badly needed score, perhaps at the start of the second half for them. Yeah, I think that's Juna Coleman there that just got a bit injured trying to stop Rachel Sawyer. Rachel, I've played with her for years. I can tell you from experience, she's an extremely hard player to stop once she gets running. And she's got a few frees now for Carlo, which are part of the... They've kind of kept them in the game for a while there. Absolutely. Sarah Doyle has hit four points. Three of those have come from frees. Her opening point of the game was from play familiar run onto the right boot and the familiar finish that has been very very accurate so far five for her in the match thus far makes the scoreline one goal and 11 to uh, eight points at the minute still a lot of work here for Carlo to do here as they try and chip down that lead try to eat into it certainly Antrim with a little bit of an advantage built up here at this stage now and once more it's the centre half forward here for Carlo Gilmartin switches it out here to Mahan Bachan into Sarah Doyle. Carlo knee, know they need scores. Doyle looking to provide them. Goes to ground under the weight of the tackle. And that's going to be a free in. The Antrim players not too happy maybe with the decision. But again, the running of Sarah Doyle obviously causing them problems. Last time she benefited from the work of her teammates. This is a free that she's won herself. Again, she'll be looking to provide that finish. Again, she's going to hit it from the right. Just outside the 21-meter line. And it's one that should suit a right-footed kicker here. 
Bit an excellent return rate from her so far. Made a good connection. Gets through the ball well with the strike and scores her point number six in the game and reduces the deficit ever so slightly here. One goal and 11 now to nine points. And those scores, those frees, very much keeping Carlo in the business here. Yeah, Carlo pressing up with the Antrim kick out there, as we said at half time, like they probably would. But Car really good kick out there, gets to Cathy Carey. Yeah, it was excellent that they managed to do that. Carey again switching the ball back outside her here. Here's Devlin, good delivery from her, dropping it into the inside forward line. Antrim's will be turned now to need a score. The referee has spotted the push in the back on the Antrim player there, who was their number 10, Gronya McLaughlin. She was fouled, and it presents them with a good opportunity here to keep the scoreboard ticking over. And again, they're going to be bringing up, uh, Kathy, is it Cathy Carey? It is. And Cathy Carey is going to kick this one from between the 21 and the 14 metre line. Hit a point earlier in the match. Onto the right boot. Just about enough in that. It scraped over the bar. She made sure of the accuracy and uh, converts the score here for the Ulster side. Eight minutes and 20 seconds into the second period of play. And it's one goal and 12. That's a total of 15 for Antrim, 10 points for Carlo, five between the teams. Carlo getting their kick out away again. Well won by Antoinette Downing. Antrim not really getting as much joy. They're still pressing up on those kick outs, but uh, Carlo winning a, a lot more percentage of them, but they played themselves into trouble. Brona Devlin momentarily thought about taking the quick free. Instead, it's going to go back here. And Antrim, I'm sure, now will look to try and maybe convert this one. Gronya McLaughlin, it's her type of territory. From the edge of the D. Just want to make sure of this one. It'll be two in a row here for Antrim, but we'll give them that little bit of breathing space again right at the start of the second half. Antrim team that beat Carlo twice in the championship last year. And that's going to drop in there dangerously short once more. Worrying moments there in the Carlo defence. That's always the most dangerous ball. The shot for a point that drops short, but a real let off there for Ed Burke's team, a former Waterford boss uh, who reached the semi finals with them, managed Tipperary as well in the past. Now in charge of uh, this uh, Carlo team, taking on Emma Kelly's Antrim here this afternoon in this All Ireland semi final. Ball with Cathy Carey again on the far side of the field. Lovely running, great support play from Antrim. Antrim, constant factor in their performance thus far, and Prentice in here again, and there's an overlapping player, it's Morrow O'Neill, and there's the finish, and there's the goal, and it's been coming for some time, O'Neill the player who gets it, a couple of let-offs earlier in the match, not so on this occasion, Marie O'Neill finishes it to the net, and again it's that quick transition, fast moving, fast passing, and it paid dividends. Really, really good from Antrim there, that's going to be hard for any team to stop, but that goal has been, they've been knocking on it for a while and that's put a, a lot of distance between the two teams. Carlo have a lot of work to do here if they want to get back into this game. Well it's an Antrim team that are driven on lost last year's All-Ireland final to Wicklow. They're going to be bringing in Carlo are going to be bringing in I should say uh, Dan O'Brien the number 21 and I think it's the midfielder that's coming off there for them as well. Indeed it is number 8 Elaine Ware is the player that they've brought to shore but really at this stage now changes will have to be contemplated also a switch coming up on the Antrim team very shortly as well. Number 27 Michelle McGee is going to be brought in for them. So the two teams at this stage now bringing in reinforcements from the sideline but uh, with only 10 minutes played in the second half very much now it's a case of almost going for broke for Carlo now at this stage. That's it yeah they brought Dan in there. Dan is a super kicker of the ball they probably want to get her on the ball get a few more scores on the board the subs are going to be really important for both teams it's quite hot here still the sun is shining down and players are going to get tired very soon yeah Gotland Taggart is the player who is going to come off for Antrim so again Carlo get their kick out away well taken by Ruth Birmingham their confidence will be well and truly shaken a little bit now after the concession of that goal Goalkeeper out once again, Nicole Handley. They're going to have to take a few more chances as the game goes on. Neve Murphy here trying to work the ball out. But that high press from Antrim is uh, very much limiting Carlo's uh, ability to get momentum going when it comes to the transition from back to front. That's one of the subs that's in there for Antrim. They're number 19, Kiernan, who was brought in right at the start of the second half. Now they've walked the ball in there towards Sarah Doyle. Corner forward, making so much headway. Good running inside now from Carlo this time. Can they pull a score back here? We really need a goal. Doyle getting the shot away. Thought maybe that a goal could have been on, but in the end she'll be happy enough to take the point. Point number seven for her, Sarah Doyle. Wonderful performance. One of the real... I suppose, leaders out there for Carlo today. 
Yeah, super from Sarah. That's seven points. That's an excellent return for any player. Sarah's been really influential this year for Carlo, and she's still quite a young girl, so she's a really bright future ahead of her. An Antrim team that defeated New York 7-19 to 8 points, then got the better of Limerick by 12 points to 1-7 in the group stages. Carlo started with a narrow defeat against London, lost 1-9 to 10, then beat Derry 2-16 to 4, and had a 1-9 to 1-5 victory against Fermanagh in their final group game. That's how the teams got here into the stage of the competition. Carlo finished Finishing second behind Fermanagh after the three teams finished up on six points. It was an intriguing final day in the, that uh, group section of the Junior Championship. Could be a little bit more, maybe straightforward. Here comes Neve McIntosh, the Antrim cornerback, running into the tackle and losing out as a result there. Kiernan once again, Eva Kiernan once more back there to win some possession for the uh, Carlo team. But Antrim have it almost immediately. And again, it's quick. It's a good, accurate delivery down into their inside forward line. Once more, it's Orla Printer, the full forward who has uh, reefed so much havoc here in the Carlo defence, goes to ground again under the way to the tackle. And that's another free in. And there's no doubt about it, Printer. She scored three points, but it's a contribution from general play that has really caught my eye. Another change there, Car Kivina Collins is coming in. I think number 17 is going to be introduced there as well for Carlo at this stage. And they're very much, as you would anticipate, going for Broke at this stage, making all the changes here. And even Martin, I think, is the player of the centre half forward who was coming off. Yeah, that's Kiva Collins there from Will Auckland going in. Um, she'll look slot into the backs there, I imagine, or maybe into midfield. Carlo or Antrim have walked this one short. A shot again from uh, the full forward printer being blocked down there, but they're going to get a free, much more central position. Well, we would have expected them maybe to have shot directly for a point the last time round. They decided to go short. They've won another free, and Cathy Carey has a much, much more easier opportunity here from on the 21 meter line, dead straight in front of the posts. Great opportunity coming up here now from the money glass player to get this one away slots it well between the posts she was always going to convert that one takes it well her third point of the game so far and Antrim put a little bit more daylight between themselves here and their opponents from Carlo in this All-Ireland Junior semi-final Cathy Carey 32 years of age now operations manager and uh, made her debut hard to believe all of 20 years ago great servant for the Antrim cause that ball has gone out there to the lift of the post and has gone out wide but just when you think of it Cathy Carey as I mentioned there 32 years of age and uh, the debut back 20 years ago back in 2002 won All-Ireland Juniors in 2009 and 2012 to have that experience out there is fantastic especially when it comes to big games like this yeah absolutely Cathy's a really really um, influential player and inspirational player I'd say for the Antrim team she's been really good this match so far Maria O'Neill taking on the defence again good tackle coming in there from Ruth Berman just got the hand in at the right time to deflect that without at the expense of a 45. But Antrim, since that second goal, you can really sense here that they've seized the initiative, haven't they? Yeah, absolutely. And I think one thing there, um, Carlo have given away a good few frees this half, which is something that they were quite good at last half. But I'd say that's down to players getting a bit tired. Yeah, Orla Kerr is about to be introduced as well for them. It's Tennyson now who brings the ball forward. Here's Carey back to Tennyson. Support play there is always from Orlet Prenter. Long, ambitious Gary Owens type kick. And that's always going to go the wrong side of the post. Wide number seven, I make it for them so far. So the change that we flagged just a couple of moments ago is now taking place. Number 21, Orlet Carr uh, coming in here now for Antrim at this stage. And I think it's their number 15. Is it this going to be brought off? Indeed, it is. It's number 13, no, 13. sorry. Yeah. Brona Devlin, who scored two points in the game. And Brona Devlin is the player who makes way. So opportunities for. Some of the players that have been brought in here from Antrim maybe to stake a claim for a place if they are in the fortunate position of going into the All-Ireland Final coming up at the end of July. All-Final scheduled for Crow Park. Don't forget the TG Cahar All-Ireland Ladies Senior Football Semi-Finals down for decision next Saturday at that particular venue. Promises uh, to be a huge day. Once more, De Huntsy again setting up Antrim on this latest attack as they move the ball quickly through the channels. As we mentioned there, one of the players coming in, or Lacar, adding a little bit of uh, fresh legs to the forward line here for the closing stages of the game. And she's up onto the 21-meter line, onto the 40-meter line. De Hunsi takes the shot in the end, but it's easily gathered there by Handley, the uh, goalkeeper, downing the baseball cap now for the closing stages of this match. Unsurprisingly, the sun very much uh, shining directly down towards the goals on that side of the field. One of the Antrim players down injured now at the moment. Play continues around her, however. Sarah Doyle bringing the ball forward. 
Doyle going forward. Good run from her. Opportunity here now for Fitzpatrick, who had got up at the attack for the Carlo players, and they've got a little bit of a, an overlap here. Eventually, they're going to get the shot away, and that's dropping in and dropping over the bar. Well taken point from Dana O'Brien. A sub who has been brought on for them, and getting our opening score of the game as well. Carlo having that numerical advantage, making a count, and it was a score that they needed. Yeah, definitely, just to kind of keep the scoreboard ticking for a while. Good score there from Dan off the left boot. Well worked in as well by Owen Fitzpatrick. You can see there made the run up from the backs. Yeah, and seriously, Tennyson was the uh, player who had picked up the injury. Still receiving treatment, back up on her feet. That's the good news from an actual perspective, and they've already taken the kick out. Gone a little bit wayward for them now, and Carlo will be looking to continue on with the momentum with Sarah Doyle that they are building up here. 45 metres out from goal. Looks to turn provider. Gets that well inside there to Sinead Hayden, taking on the defence. Oh, great block coming in, and it was, I think, Tennyson, the player who was injured just a couple of moments ago, re-announces her arrival, her arrival back in the field and makes an absolutely fantastic block there. Good to see a player coming back after picking up an injury and going straight in and literally speaking, putting their body on the line. <laughs> really, really good block there by her. You can see there a big difference between the teams is the runners. The mm -hmm. Carlo just don't have those runners going forward that Antrim do. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. There's been a system that's been helped and is and abetted, you could say, by the fact that they've been able to retain so many of the kickouts as well. Ball lobbed in there again to the Carlo forward line. Shot eventually coming in from Rachel Sayre. And that one's dropped out to the wrong side of the post and wide. The chance is few and far between now for Carlo, unfortunately, for them in the second half. And that's really where you need a, a conversion rate. You need to take those when you're being limited and the attacks are somewhat sporadic in the second period of play. Yeah, absolutely. Those are the ones you want to be starting over. I'd say Rachel will probably be a little bit disappointed with that one, but they're really, Antrim are doing really well in the defence there. It's really hard for Carlo to break it down. Yeah, seriously, Tennyson has been excellent at centre half back for them right throughout. Ashley McFarland looks uh, very assured and solid at full back as well. Now they've walked the ball in here to Anya Tuberty, whose early goal set the play in motion for them. Carr has played this one outside her. Oh, just the pass wasn't accurate enough. And it afforded Carlo the opportunity to come in and pick the pocket and intercept. And uh, they've won a free out for themselves again. But every time Antrim go on those marauding runs, I think the best way to describe them, you can almost hear the alarm bells going off in the Carlo defence. It's something that they've uh, found difficult to counteract in the game so far. But still, they're in there. Still, there's an opportunity for them. Rachel Sayer, look at this for a run. Can't she get the finish now at the end of it? Oh, the referee says she's overcarried the ball. And that was tough. It was a good run. She really troubled Antrim on that occasion. Yeah, really good run there. She started from outside the 45 and she just probably needed a little bit of help there to give the ball away, give the ball to. She didn't have it though. And Antrim come back out with the ball. Yeah, they're getting an opportunity there for them. So the scoreline remains. Uh, 12 points to two goals and 13. And uh, very much uh, the Whole play at the moment, suiting Antrim here. Seven-point lead going into the final ten minutes. Are they going to be going back to Crow Park to play in an All-Ireland final for the uh, second year running, beaten in the final last year by Wicklow, remember? Now the ball coming forward and an opportunity here again for Antrim. Referee spotting the infringement, and that is going to be another free for them. And a very good point that you made there. Carlo, who were very, very disciplined in the opening half, they're conceding a lot of frees here at the start of the second half. We'll talk about that in a moment because there could be an opportunity of a score on here for Cathy Carey. Offloads the ball to Kerr. She's been lively after coming in off the bench. And there you go. She kicks that one in and over the bar. A fine point from her. Orla Carr in there and gets her point. And uh, that's definitely a player I would strongly argue that's uh, making a strong case for inclusion come the All-Ireland final. Absolutely, yeah. And Antrim will be looking forward to that, I think, now. You tell uh, Hayden is coming in for Carlo at this stage. Is it Adele? Yeah, number 20. Yeah, Adele for Sinead Hayden. And Sinead Hayden's coming off. So those are the changes being made by the Carlo management team here at this stage as they somehow try and change things around here a little bit, see if there's any way they can pull themselves back into contention here. More movement on the Antrim bench as well. Ali Murphy, number 19, could be coming in shortly. But right now, it's Marie O'Neill who sets this latest attack in motion for them. And once more, they've got the ball back out there to Laura de Hunsi, who gets the shot away, but it goes out to the wrong side of the post and wide. And again, there's going to be a kick out for Nicole Handley. It was uh, it back 45. For yeah, back, back for the free. You're dead right. Yeah, that's exactly what has taken place. And there's going to be more opportunities here now for Antrim just to keep, I suppose, the scoreboard ticking over they are so close to the finishing line at this stage now just under 8 minutes remaining 21 minutes over 21 minutes played here 
but still a goal for Carlo and anything they will feel could be possible for them but no doubt about it it's an Antrim team in the ascendancy Gronje McLaughlin preparing to kick the free here for them the right half forward has had a fairly good day from freeze thus far that's off the lift boot should suit her slots the ball in takes it really well good score indeed from her third point of the match so far and I suppose when you look at the Antrim team as well the quality of free taking has been excellent for them right throughout the course of the game and any of those fouls that Carlo are conceding well the with the likes of the 24 year old Gronje McLaughlin there from St. Joseph's the uh, civil engineer certainly uh, making the accurate connection taking the scores and punishing the opposition the player who has been on the inter-county team now for the last two years made the debut back in 2020 and very much a regular fixture on this Antrim team again it's Carlo who come away with it that's uh, Neve Murphy the cornerback playing it inside there to Orna Fitzpatrick the full back getting the opportunity here again now is Neve Murphy so many things just going against Carlo at the minute and it's the able to try and carry the ball out of the fence that's the big thing for them elsewhere we can tell you Fabana five goals and six points and Limerick two goals and eight 45 minutes in there, Emer Smith has scored her second goal and Fermanagh's fifth in that game, so no doubt about it, Fermanagh looking good as well. Strong Ulster contingent, it seems to be heading there towards the All-Ireland final. Right now, there's going to be the Antrim team, the Ulster team we're looking at here, very much in full flight at the minute. Ball kicked right across the face of the goal there. They're working hard to try and keep it in play. Umpire signal that it has gone wide and a reprieve here for Carlo. 23 minutes, 40 seconds played. Any way back for Carlo at this stage? I think if they go up and they, if they can get a goal in the next few plays, it definitely they still will have a chance. This Antrim team are really well oiled. Claire McDonough has come in there as well, number 28, I think, for them. That seems to be the latest change that's been made. Yeah, they've been trying to, I think, change a few players up in the forward just to switch things up a little bit. Neve Kelly is the player who has come off for her. That's the latest change being made by the Carlo ladies here. Deep now into the second half here. Their All Ireland ambitions very much hanging by a thread, you could suggest. Bringing the ball forward was Ella Atkinson. But again, Antrim are able to overturn it. They're setting up the formations once again. A lot of play going through Cathy Carey. More direct in the running this time. Ball played immediately inside there towards Sinead Thompson. Now it's uh, lobbed in there invitingly once more towards the direction of Marie O'Neill. But it's gone out over the line and it's gone wide. One or two wides mounting up now for Antrim at this stage, but they're having so much of the possession. Interesting to note as well, even in that last attack, it was a little bit more of a direct ball inside. Perhaps the field, Carlo, are beginning to leave gaps now as they're chasing the game. Yeah, I think so. I'd say Carlo backs are probably getting a bit tired. They've been blowing a lot of ball the last, uh, the last half, really. So That's Antrim it. probably looking to just go the direct route, the easy route. Yeah, it's been a rear guard action for them. Another decision, I think, rightly goes against Ruth Birmingham there. She did end up in the ground, but did overcarry the ball. There was good discipline tackling from here, you would have to say, for Antrim. But well coached in the tackle, making sure they're not giving away the freeze. Here comes Sarah Doyle. Still, there's always hope when she gets possession. Still, it's Sarah Doyle here, moving with intent. Three Antrim players around her. Still, she gets it onto the right boot, gets the shot away, and that's gone out for a 45. Or is it going to be a free? A free, I a think, free. Yeah. It's going to be a free... I thought the shot maybe took a deflection on the way out, but the referee, in any case, has brought it back and is going to award a free in here. And again, it was the running game, that of uh, Sarah Doyle, that I suppose has been Carlos' constant threat throughout the game, their main threat throughout the game. Yeah, I think so. I think one thing Antrim have done quite well is they've got their matchups right here. They've really minimised the effect of Rachel Sawyer. And, well, I suppose Sarah as well, even though Sarah has got seven points, they've been mm. Carlos' main players, and they haven't really been as effective, in the game yeah. as effective as they have in previous matches yeah, and she's got her eighth point of the minute but totally your point makes sense because a lot of the vast majority of those maybe bar one i think have come from uh, from freeze so that'll just tell you how much uh, antrim have got the matchups right here two teams that know each other so well of course have been so familiar with each other in the championship from last year as well and uh, as a result of that well there was always going to be the opportunity here that they would know each other when you look back at the uh, League campaigns for the teams too. It's uh, certainly in Division 4. A's where uh, Antrim played. Finished second bottom in that particular division. But have very much uh, found the form here for the championship. And they're looking to seal it all off here now. And an opportunity for them once more. And there's the finish. So that's goal number three. And that really, really ends the game as a contest. And it's uh, Maria O'Neill who was in there. Who finished the ball to the back of the net. Fine goal for her. Second of the match. 
And I'm afraid from a Carlo perspective, that is curtains. Yeah, I think so. They're really running out of time to put anything together now. The Antrim team, though, really, really good. Some seriously talented footballers there, especially in the forward line. I know you said they've kicked a few wides, but mm -hmm. the kicks they've been kicking have been really excellent. Well, look at their scoreline. Three goals and 15 points to uh, 13 points for Carlo. So 3.15 to 13 points at the scoreline at the moment. Very much making sure that there is a strong, strong lead here for the Antrim ladies at the moment. And again, now they're coming forward, again, setting themselves up to really go for the kill here in the closing exchange. Just two and a half minutes of normal time worked in again towards Orla Prenter. It goes always a live wire. Quick distribution over to the far side. Car is there to take it on. Back onto the left boot. The angle looked acute. The shot goes in and it goes wide. More movement on the substitutes bench. Number eight is uh, coming in there, Claire Emerson. So she's going to be brought in as a sub. Anya Turbert is saying at nine, and the uh, player who is uh, making way is number nine, who's coming out there. That's Anya Turbert, the player who is making way. So Emerson coming in, and uh, the change is very much now been at this stage, being deployed here by Antrim late in the game. Opportunity to look at as many players as possible. Carlo, to their credit and to the credit of Sarah Doyle, will keep going. Doyle with the right foot of delivery and has to be a kind of a hopeful ball in there now at this stage. See if they can get any type of breaks in round to try and trouble the Antrim goal late in the game. As you, we've uh, mentioned there, number 28 has come in for Carlo in the last couple of minutes as well. Claire McDonough might have had a physical presence inside. Ball been kicked in there by Ruth Birmingham, the team captain, but Antrim's defence has really stood up to the challenge of any type of ball that has gone in there for them and it's been hugely impressive for them. Yeah, I'm sure at half-time Antrim are saying they wouldn't want to concede any goals and they've done that really, really well. Their defence has been absolutely solid all afternoon. Marie O'Neill's jersey been pulled there. Her tally of 2-2 has been hugely impressive in the game as well. They're switching the focal point from right to left on a constant base Bases in this attack. Here's Orla Prenter. Player free outsider is Claire Emerson. Emerson just on the field. I think got caught between two minds between whether going for a goal or a point in the in shot neither. Yeah, yeah. Just unlucky there from her. She probably wasn't really sure herself what she was mm. going for. But good play in. As you can see, that switching ball that the Antrim have been using all afternoon is so effective. Yeah, it's going from right to left. The focal points of the attack changing all the time there. And uh, really in the other one for Man of 5-8, Limerick three goals and 9.55 minutes in. Barade Kavanagh has scored a late, late goal there for Limerick, but just is it enough? We'll have to wait and see. Time will tell here. It's an awful lot more straightforward, it seems. 3.15 to 13 points, and we're ticking away in well into the final minute now of normal time here. Here come Carlo once more. Atkinson bringing the ball forward, gets the fisted pass outsider now. Let's see if they can work something into the forward line late on there. Two players very, very committed going for that one. Referee just saw it as a coming together and no foul. And as a result of that, Antrim again are going to get the opportunity to get another attack going. And once more, they've played the ball down here in towards the forward line. Theresa Mallon kicks the ball forward once more. Another one of the subs that has been brought in there for them, as indeed is Michelle McGee, wearing number 27. Answer with so many players on there. McGee has a shot and she's quite happy to take the score and another point from her. Well, they've got an injury there as well. Yeah, Lara Dunsey took a hit there when she went up for that ball. She's gone down. That'll be a worry for Antrim because she has been super for this match. Absolutely. They'd want to be wrapping her up in cotton wool almost ahead of the finals. She's been hugely influential for them today, so they'll be checking out on her fitness and availability now. Of course, the head of the All-Ireland final. It'll be yeah. a quick run in for them for that. Yeah, Antrim have been super today, but I also do think, I'm not just saying this because I'm from Carlo, yeah. I do think that they will go away from this match disappointed, mm -hmm. feeling that they never really played to their full potential. It's probably they haven't played as well in this match as they have in previous ones. Yeah, absolutely. And indeed, maybe you could say over-reliant very much on Sarah Doyle as well as an attacking threat. Yeah, I think so. I think that's another difference between the team. Antrim were very creative up mm -hmm. the forward. They were trying different things, the cross ball in, the long ball in, whereas Carlo didn't really. They were kind of trying the direct route the whole time. Yeah. It hasn't really worked and there out. there was no plan B. It just seemed difficult to spot plan B in any I case. I think so, yeah. yeah. And, uh, but that's credit to the Antrim defence as absolutely. well, who've been solid. Yeah, they've marked everything out of it so far, so we're into injury time and uh, very much uh, going through the final phases of this game as Antrim come on the attack once again. Carey, team skipper, will be surely looking forward to headquarters in a couple of weeks' time. Maria O'Neill, again, being fouled on the way through there. And there's more opportunities now for Cathy Carey, who has scored three points in the match so far, to inflict some further damage here late 
at the end of the second half. Carey kicks the ball in, drops it in well from distance and takes it really well. Good point indeed. Four points from her in the All-Ireland semi-final. Even some of the subs that have come in for Antrim as well, you can just imagine that there'll be a lot of intensity you feel at training sessions in the in the lead-up now to the big day in Croker. Absolutely. They have some super footballers out there. I wouldn't don't think I'd like to be picking the team ahead <laughs> of the All-Ireland final. They've had some girls who've really stood up today and have been really, really good for them. Very much represented in the scoreline, which stands at 3.17 to 13 points now at the minute. Well into injury time. One or two little stoppages, and of course the time also is going to have to be added on for the various substitutes that were introduced throughout the game as well. Something that the match officials will have to uh, take consideration of. Perhaps maybe from, when we look at it uh, from the referee's perspective in this game as well, Lorraine O'Sullivan, we haven't really mentioned her too many times in the game, which is always a good sign for a referee. Yeah, I think she's been very, very good Excellent, this evening. She's yeah. been really, really consistent and she's had a nice flow to the game as well. There yeah. hasn't been two stop start. It's been nice. It's, yeah, she's did a really, really good job in this encounter. The uh, match official from Donegal, and now Antrim come in search here of a couple of more scores, very much to, well, put a good gloss on the scoreline if it isn't there already. So here's a Tennyson, the player have been fouled, and a free is going to be coming in now for Cathy Carey once more. Obviously, he's going to look to see what options are available, decides to go directly down the middle with this one. Again, the ball won inside there by Marie O'Neill has really blossomed here in this game. She could be chasing a hat-trick of goals here. Instead, she offloads it. Here's Brenter. Here's an opportunity. Wonderful save again from Nicole Hanley. The goalkeeper coming out, making her third point blank save in the game. And really, she has uh, certainly earned her keep in there. Absolutely. Nicole has been super today. And the goals that Antrim have scored, they're all great. They were well taken by Antrim. It's no fault of hold but even on her kick out she's been she has done well to find especially some in the them. second yeah, half she's absolutely. got so many of the way and they've been almost a high risk strategy of having to go short that's where she felt the best options were and she got a large percentage of those away particularly in the second half car is dropping this one in there dangerously again mcgee is inside back onto the right boot takes that score really well two points now for michelle mcgee since coming in as a sub and that very much epitomizes what we we're saying earlier on that there's going to be competition for places with the impact that some of the subs have made after coming off the bench absolutely that's such a benefit for a team even the competition at training and drives mm -hmm. the team on. Yeah, well, there's the full-time whistle. It's ended here in a comprehensive victory indeed for Antrim. Three goals and 18 points to 13 points. Definitely, I suppose, the better team. Very much in the second half went about their business. Hugely efficient and uh, really for long spells of the second period, just the one team in it. Absolutely, yeah. That Antrim team is working like a really well-oiled machine there. They have, you can see, put in super work during the year. I think they'll be very hard bet in a final. Yeah, well, it's going to be a huge final for them. It's looking like in all intensive purposes it'll be for Manor they'll be taking on in it, but that'll be confirmed a little bit later on. But there you have it. Convincing victory here for the Antrim ladies this afternoon. They have won this All-Ireland junior semi-final three goals at 18 points to 13 points the full-time scoreline last year it took extra time on two occasions when these teams met today a different story entirely as Antrim march forward now to the All-Ireland final and finally Neve, there'll probably be a proposition and a difficult opposition for anybody there to beat yeah I think so I think um, whichever team Limerick or Fermanagh comes up to face them are really going to have their work cut out they came Antrim came with intent today they want to win back the All-Ireland final that they're unfortunate to not win last year and I think they'll have a really good go at it. All right, well, look at absolutely fantastic stuff. Neve, brilliant to have you along here. Can we wish you recovery you. from all the injury and we look forward to seeing you back out there on the playing fields before long. The rest of our crew here today on camera, we had Damien Grimes, um, also the uh, graphics from videostream.ie and as always, our producer and director was Rory O'Brien. From myself, John Lynch, it's a game that we thoroughly enjoyed. Hard luck to Carlo. Their championship journey ends while Antrim can look forward to contesting this year's All-Ireland TG Cahar Junior Football Final. From all of us here, a very good afternoon.